if it's not fun for you, then you shouldn't really be doing it in my opinion. So it, it's find whatever it is that you like to do, try to do it the best you do and you can and just keep progressing and just have a good time doing it because it's, it's all about you at the end of the day. Yeah, so my name is Daniel Donovan. Uh, I live outside of Detroit, Michigan right now. Um, and I, I'm a Michigan Tech grad as well. So that's pretty common on this channel, it seems like. So I've got to wrap the Huskies. Um, like I said, live in Michigan. So climb Michigan ice for Michigan Ice Fest. Uh, but yeah, my, my YouTube channel uh, is called uh, an, an Occasional Adventurer. Um, I uh, like to pursue a lot of, I consider myself kind of a mountain athlete per se. Um, not, I'm not sponsored or anything. Uh, I'm looking for sponsors, but that'd be nice. Um, I, I I like to do everything, uh, whether it comes to winter or summer sports. So it's either uh, ski, uh, uh, backcountry skiing um, in Michigan. I like to ice climb. That's kind of been how I've gotten a lot into this. Um, in the summer, I rock climb a little bit and getting into trad climbing. But then I also enjoy a lot of uh, peak bagging type activities. So kind of fast and light and taking uh, an easier slash class four route up mountains is kind of what I really enjoy. And I, I bring a camera along and I, I try to be funny during it and have a good time. Um, and yeah, share my adventures with my friends, family, and whoever wants to watch it. Yeah. I was watching a handful of your videos the other day just to kind of, you know, get some research done before this interview. And I really liked your kind of vlog style videos where you're you're trekking through the woods you're trekking through the snow to go ice climb at, at pitched rocks in michigan which is a you know, place i've been through a million times but i've never ice climbed and that was just like very cool seeing you guys struggle with the snowmobile get out there and you know set up just you and your buddy climbing up this thing uh and then yeah you've done some other cool stuff you you've done a lot of like peak summoning uh you you're a big backcountry skier as you said and I, I know you started getting into ultra marathon running, which was very cool because you recorded it. And I just did my first marathon. That was very cool, but it was just like flatland Michigan. Uh, you had a nice enough camera that you're running these through, I believe Utah and you're, oh, Zion. Mm. And, uh, you know, I could kind of see how massive those cliffs were that you're running along. Um, you know, you, you can never kind of capture it with a camera, but, I think your camera was quality enough and your footage was good enough that I could kind of see the the depth of the cliff that you're running along. So you've done a whole lot. And mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I kind of want to have you on so we could talk about your, your philosophy on all this. Like you are an engineer, I'm an engineer. We, we like to tinker and figure things out. And something that I find myself doing and a part of why I did this channel is because I want to, continue to push myself. I want to continue to evolve and grow alongside the people that I'm interviewing. And I, I think you share that as well. Um, I mean, you've, oh, yeah. you've done a lot of different sports. How are you thinking about those? How do you get from zero to novice to advanced or whatever? Yeah. So the great thing about, uh, being a beginner in anything that you do is you get to learn, uh, is kind of what I, what I've gotten to do. Um, so I, 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 so I finished college, graduated college in 2019 and I was just sitting around uh, with my job in Michigan here in 2020. And I was like, I need something to do. Um, and I found that there was a ice climbing tower called Peabody's ice climbing up in Fenton, Michigan. And it is literally a 70 foot and a 40 foot ice tower that, uh, Garrett makes all of his own ice on <laughs> and he like farms it in the winter. So you can go there, rent all the ice climbing gear, and then kind of go from there. And you can top rope it. It is, it's one of a kind place, and it's such a cool uh, area to meet like-minded people who like the outdoors and love adventures. Um, but on the progression side, is you just got to try something and see if you like it. And I was immediately hooked when I got into ice climbing. Uh, so like. And then I've gotten to do a lot of adventures. My channel has a couple of videos on me ice climbing up in Michigan, but it kind of has accumulated to my most recent one this last February, where we did three or four different uh, big routes in Ure, Colorado. Um, and yeah, to get to that point, though, it's it's funny. You, you can't 
I'm not afraid to embarrass myself, I would say. So I literally bring like wood ice tools into a commercial gym and hang on them uh, at like your normal everyday like work like workout gym. So like I have these wood ice tools, I'm practicing holding, I'm hanging weights off of me and like I'm practicing my grip. So did that over time. i have all self-taught, all self-trained through books. I love to read. Like we said, we're engineers. So we're, we love to just read and get progressive on things and Excel spreadsheets, uh, making bar graphs, progression overload. That's like what we love to do. Um, so training for the new alpinism was the book I read and got me hooked. And then also, uh, for ice climbing and that helped me progress from climbing kind of like WI2, WI3 short, maybe 40, 50, uh, freestanding pillars in the UP of Michigan. And then eventually taking that and then going to URA after year over year of gaining confidence to climb WI4 plus of multi-pitch up in URA. Um, and it's, it's just when you live in Michigan and you can't get into the mountains or get vert, uh, it's just kind of, you have to grind and that's just kind of how it is. And you have to kind of think about how your training will help you out where you want to go. And that's just kind of been the process that I've fallen in love with is kind of like you train in the dark or you train like just kind of doing your own thing here in the, in flatland Michigan. And then you get to take it out to these bigger mountains and bigger ranges to just kind of show everything that you trained for. And it's, it's very satisfying for me. I really like that. A lot of people are afraid to start things because they, they obsess about the gear, you know, do I have the right bike? Do I have the right backpack? Uh, you know, they compare themselves to everyone. A good example of this is I went and did a 50 mile bike race, a gravel race recently. And in the middle of this race, somebody rides right up to me. It's like, hey, is this your first race? It's like, how could you tell, man? I'm wearing like a skateboard helmet. I got a mountain bike that's, you know, I don't know, eight years old, 10 years old. Um, I don't know. I just had none of the right gear compared to everyone. When I showed up this to this thing, people were so competitive. They had these wild bikes. Everyone has their their like biking jacket or, or vest, whatever you call it, with the pockets in it. And I just looked totally out of place. I felt out of place, but I was excited to be there. And I knew I could do it with the gear I had. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot of people, and that's where you start, right? Now I got my, I did my toes. Uh, there's definitely a lot of other sports I like more than that, but, you know, I, I've always wanted, I need a new bike. I want a new mountain bike, you know, that'll love me, love me up there. Um, you know, getting a biking helmet, that'd, that'd probably make me look better and cool my head a little bit better, but you can't obsess about all this gear when you're, you're trying to dip your toes into something you just had to get yourself around the people doing it and in the environment for it you summited a lot of peaks like how did you get into that and how is you how have you progressed through that journey so that, that that's another kind of funny one uh because uh you don't know what you don't know <laughs> type of aspect so um it all starts by a, a, another YouTube channel that I'll, probably a lot of adventure people have heard of. It's called Mediocre Amateur. They're some of the funniest dry humor you've hear, heard while well, they're doing very similar videos to mine. Uh, that's kind of how I've based my kind of style off of in YouTube. But mm -hmm. they inspired um, my friend Shane and I, who was earlier on the podcast, to do a peak called Long's Peak out in Colorado. Um, and that involved me and Shane meeting up in Chicago. I drove from Michigan. He drove from Wisconsin. We met in uh, Chicago. And then we road tripped 20 hours, uh, switching off driving, driving off through the night all the way to Chicago over 4th of July about five years ago. And we're just like, we get there, we start to get packed and ready, and we go try to do Long's Peak, uh, the keyhole route. And we're just out there having a great time. Um, but like you said, you have a heavy backpack, you have heavy pants. I had way too many layers. I had a cotton shirt on. It's, you just kind of like struggle through it. And then you just see all these other people wearing things or have gear um, that you just are like, whoa, like, what is that? Like, oh, there's approach shoes with rubber things that are kind of like rock shoes. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And, but once again, they got to the top, of, we got to the top of the summit despite having all that gear that apparently isn't optimal but you don't need optimal gear to kind of out and go try is uh kind of my thought is and of course i completely bonked at the top of that mountain 
uh, so that was my first experience of bonking at 14,000 feet. Uh, so definitely had a lot of altitude sickness, uh, got a lot of water, some leave, and then came back down. But it, it's, it's one of those things that you say, well, that's the title of your podcast. It's type two fun. Like in the middle of it, you're not probably having the best time, but I look back at that now, five years ago, and that was like the start of the, the journey. Um, and it just makes me so happy that I tried and said yes and kept doing things because that led me into doing um, even bigger, bigger things out in the mountains. Um, the, probably the one I'm most proud of for like a peak bag or scramble is one called uh, Granite Peak out in uh, the Beartooths of, um, of Montana, which is actually Montana's state high point. Um, but it's around a 26 mile run uh, slash scramble with some class four moves. And I, I was training for the ult an ultra marathon at the time. And I, I wanted to kind of check myself and see how my, my training was working. And I saw a weather window. I flew out to drove a car, camped in grizzly bear country by myself and uh, launched at like about four or five in the morning in the dark, which is probably the scariest experience I've ever done still. Uh, just walking through dark with the headlamp and just seeing eyes off in the distance every once in a while. Uh, in grizzly bear country um but it's it, it's just the willing to try that and like i had an experience out there that i don't think i'd ever get to re redo anywhere because i actually ran into this group of polish climbers who were trying to do some of the state high points in uh in the united states and one of their guys actually left their backpack like near the summit and they were like oh no like his passport's in there his uh like his money, his ID, everything was in there. So he couldn't get home. So he he and another person in the group started to walk back towards the mountain. And I was doing it in a day. So I, I was lighting fast. And they were like, hey, if you find it, could you bring it back down and like hand it off? I was like, yeah, yeah. So that was at like mile four or five. And then at mile around, I think it's mile like 12 or 13. Well, I'm about 200 feet below the summit, I find the backpack and I'm like, whoa, like this is awesome, but I need to go summit first and then I'll bring this back. So that was my side quest. <laughs> um, so on the way down, I grabbed the backpack, I start running there back with it and I run into the two guys back coming back to the mountain and they were so thankful. So just happy that I was there to help them. And like, that's a memory that I'll always have. And if you don't try, you don't, you can't make memories like that. Um, so that, that's one I'm super proud of. And the video in the background right now is uh, just a venture day that Mount that it's called Mount Bora. It was Idaho State High Point. And Shane and I just had a great time, even though we kind of sandbagged ourselves and had to go down to this huge couloir. It's like, but we were fine and we have all these fun adventures with friends. It's it's my whole channel is like not how hard I climb, not how far I run, not how much vert I get per day. It's all about the adventure. Um, so like, that's kind of the progression of trying something, trying something and then just keep going and getting harder and harder or longer. And yeah, so that's like the progression I've been seeing in like peak bagging type, uh, events. So, yeah, if you're uh, listening to this, um, or if you're, if you're not watching the video version, I have his channel up on, on my TV behind me. So you can just kind of see some of the stuff that, that Dan's out there doing, um, yeah, and I, I had a I had a guy on last week, two weeks ago, that did bike packing, and his whole philosophy was that Type Two Fun's a sliding scale. So, oh, yeah. you know, you went and did that that first summit or that first trail that you and Shane drove out to, and it probably wasn't hard, and you know, compared to other trails, but that was the first time you ever did something like that. And yes, your gear was underrated or whatever, but you had what you needed. You had the endurance, you had the whatever to do it. Um, for somebody, you know, your your progression might start with going and doing a three mile hike in your, your local park. And if you like that enough, you can level that up to a 10 mile hike, whatever it is. Uh, so it's, it's very cool that you can kind of dip your toes locally and figure out, you know, how far do you want to take this? Um, but yeah, what we're trying to do on this channel is just inspire people to continue to push themselves towards that next step with whatever whatever adventure, whatever I like to do. Mm -hmm. um, you did mention that you did this this ultra marathon, 
And yeah. I was watching your channel. I think the story of how you came across that is very cool. Uh, can you tell us how you decided to go from, you know, doing these peak hikes to this 50 mile ultra marathon run? So yeah, Shane and I were once again, just on an adventure, just doing some trail running over uh, Memorial Day, um, which we, I do not recommend being in Zion for Memorial Day. It was, I think they had like 50,000 people there that day. It was, it was insane. That's probably way too big of a number, but it was insane. Um, but we were, we did a trail run there and then we went and ran at Bryce Canyon uh, the day after doing, um, I think the Fairyland Loop or something. And we're just running into these other people who are just kind of walking or hiking. And they're like, oh, you guys didn't run yesterday, did you? We're like, oh, no, what do you mean? They're like, oh, there was an ultra marathon here yesterday. We're like, what, really? And then we, we didn't think much about it at, while we were doing that. But we ran into then we went to a gas station and there's this guy with a Bryce ultra 50 mile shirt on. And we're just like talking to him, just saying like, you ran 50 miles. That's insane. And then he's just like you think I'm insane. There's guys and girls out there crushing a hundred miles right now and they're still running and they started yesterday. <laughs> and we were like, that was the seed that got planted. And it, it just was planted in our heads. And I was like, man, I, I kind of want to do that. I want to see what, what we can do in a trail format because Shane and I have done long days in the mountains, like 10 plus hours. Um, but like we'd never done anything like that where it's to be like six hours of straight running so it, it, it's funny like who you meet or who you run into uh during these adventures or trips or just people to that kind of plant an idea in your brain to kind of get started on this journey and with that uh so then Shane and i had a great time doing the zion 50k shout out to vacation races who put it on it's a they do an amazing event amazing job at it um i then was able to convince him to do a 50 mile a 50 mile race the next year which i kind of feel bad for him because he lived in utah and was he loves he is his passion is uh uh split board mountaineering so he really likes to ski he skis a lot he does it all the time but then i was kind of forcing him to train for ultra marathon at the same time and we went and completed the 50 mile but it kind of broke him a little bit so then he's going to continue to work on his aerobic base and his muscular endurance and he's going to get really focused on more mountain objectives in the future whereas then i was like being stuck in michigan i was like well i can't really do mountain things here <laughs> so i'm going to sign up for 100k so i went back to zion to the zion 100k from vacation races which is around 63 miles and it it's I, I find it one of the cool or super cool course. Um, it, you get to run on, like you said, those giant walls. You get to run over on top of this mesa to start with for the first like 20 miles. Beautiful sunrise, desert coming up. And, uh, and I'm a big believer of like, yeah, like it, it's, I'm a big believer of like, it's not, it's obviously like, a you thing but it's also a team thing for ultras uh because i had uh my fiance christina she was able to pace me for around 17 miles in the beginning and then shane joined me for the last 19 miles of it um and then i had a crew of charles kendall jordan and tyler who at each aid station or at each point uh crew spot they were there asking what i could what they could do uh, they could like give me water, give me snacks and stuff. It was like a team event. So it made it much more of a party. And like I said before, it's like all about who you're with and the adventures you're having with them. Um, it's kind of like how I see a lot of adventures. Like, yeah, I like to push myself and it's for me on those aspects. But what I really remember is like my friends being there for me, um, during those races and stuff. And the one thing that we kind of been talking about is progression. So eventually I'm trying to run a hundred miler. I told myself I would do it before I'm 30. I'm, I'll be, oh, I'll be, I'll be 28 in September here. So that's only in a week or two. Ah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's then with the training wise to do, be able to do those things was I did a lot of reading. Um, I, I I'm self-taught self-trained from, um, training for the uphill athlete by Scott Johnston and, uh, Killian Jornet. And I, 
I don't know if Steve House was on that one. Uh, I don't think so. Um, but it's all about just putting in the time and putting in the effort and just being out there as much as you can. Because being in Michigan, like, you know, marathon training, you, the miles aren't going to run themselves, right? Yeah. So it's all about working up to it. So, like, I ran a 50K, which is the 31-mile race. I then went to a 50-mile race, and then I completed a 63-mile race. And the funny thing is the 50 mile race and the 63 mile race, I completed the 63 mile race in an hour less than I did the 50 mile race. <laughs> so I was able to push myself a little bit more there. And so like, and the training just helped me see what I was capable of. And those early morning dark runs in Michigan when it's middle of winter uh, kind of give you, what do I, I call them character building runs. Uh, so it's, it's just like that. And then now looking back at it like five years and seeing all the stuff that I do. And that's part of the reason I have the YouTube channel is I get to see all the adventures I've had with my friends. Um, it's just, it's just great. I really like that. There, was, I had a similar story of when, when I first discovered, I guess, ultra running and I didn't even know it at the time I was out camping in Kentucky in uh, Red River Gorge. Mm -hmm. And I wake up one morning. Climbing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I haven't done any non indoor rock climbing. I think I would enjoy it, but I I don't get to a rock climbing gym often enough. So I just if I get to go, like to me, the the gym is the same thing as like being outside climbing. There's there's a lot of other sports and camping that I I think I'd rather do when I'm when I'm doing that stuff. Um but anyways, I was I was there to to hike and like disperse camp. And I wake up in the morning, we're going through our morning routine and we see the, you know, the trail, you know, maybe half a mile up there and there's just people like kind of jogging by. It's like, okay, that's weird. And eventually start our hike and yeah, people just keep trickling by and I end up just like shouting at one of the people like, what's going on? Are you, is there like a race going on? It's like, yeah, we're doing this, whatever, you know, marathon or I don't know if it was an ultra or, or a marathon or whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't think much of it at the time, but now looking back, I'm like, you psychos were like you know running in this steep steep you know train of uh red river gorge you know kind of dangerous if you're not careful because it's all it's all wet like i slipped i like almost busted my tailbone just just walking and these people are out there running doing a full event like that and i know that you were doing something similar out in zion there's a lot of like you know very technical training you got to get through and make sure you don't hurt yourself so mm -hmm. uh yeah, it's just it's just like funny how you get exposed to some of the stuff and the the seeds that it ends up planting for you. Do you know what hundred mile or hundred k event you're gonna do? Hundred mile, yeah. right? Yeah, hundred mile is it, uh, it. It's a long shot. I'll never get into it probably. But I so Zion hundred k was a qualifier for the lottery for the Western states. Uh, which okay. is probably one of the biggest ultras that everyone heard of. So I'll definitely be putting in for that one for next year. Um, but I, I haven't picked one exactly. I might even just do the Zion 100 miler. Um, it, it, I love the course. It, it it suits me very well. It's I think it the 100 mile is around 10 to 10,000 feet of vert versus some of the mountainous ones have like 20. So um might do that. I I have also I want to do the lottery for Leadville 100, and then also um, the Bighorn 100 is kind of on my mind. And there, there's a lot of races and opportunities now, so there's that. But probably the next running thing that I would really like to do is I think it'll be a next year thing. Will be a a rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon. So I I want to run from south rim to north rim and back to south rim in a day is uh kind of on my bucket list to do um so that's my big running thing and then if i get lucky with lottery then the 100 miler will be the training goal but yeah as of right now that that's uh the rim to rim to rim is my uh kind of next thing i want to do at least running wise that's cool it's it's so where's like the the cap for you i mean you're you're progressing to this point are you uh, I, I kind of understand where you're at with your running career. You know, where do you stand with your ice climbing and your, I keep wanting to say mountaineering, uh, your mountaineering is fine. Yeah. Cause I do, I guess one of my po my most popular video is us mountaineering, uh, Mount Rainier. Okay. Uh, so that's a completely fair 
uh, assessment. Um, it, so basically, it's just continuing to either progress or just continue to enjoy myself in the mountains. Like if, if I think it sounds fun, like that's definitely what we'll be doing. Um, cause like in not Labor Day weekend, but the next weekend, uh, my friend Ed and I, who I, he's the guy I went and ice climbed with in uh, the UP for HMR, um, are going to either have tickets to Seattle and we're looking at either doing, um, a, more of an alpinist type style route on ba Mount Baker. If the weather window is good, or we're going to do some, um, alpine rock climbing, um, on Mount Stewart. Uh, is kind of what we're looking at, or Prusik Peak uh, in the Enchantments area. So it's just kind of just trying to enjoy myself being out and also like trying to push myself. Like both, all those are around seven to 8,000 foot days um, for Stewart and for um, Mount Baker. So it's like an all day event. And one thing I just love about being on my adventures just being out um i think if you've talked to if you ever asked shane about me or jordan about me they say like dan is probably the most positive guy out there and he's uh sometimes a little bit too annoying being so positive when he's out there yeah. uh, my favorite memory of that is on rainier when we were coming back down off the cleaver we summoned it we had a great time it was me shane our friend chris and our friend eric on a rope team and i'm just having a good time and i start to sing sweet caroline uh on the way down as we're coming into camp and none of the guys wanted to sing with me <laughs> so no one like i was just singing to myself and it was just i was just having a great time but they were probably wanting to cut me from the road team and kick me down the glacier <laughs> into a crevasse so it's it's that's a, a big part of uh probably why i enjoy endurance sports or how i am I, I've been able to do a lot of this stuff because I have a very positive attitude because I sit in front of a computer from eight to five each day. So when I'm out, I'm just happy to be out. Even if it's a crappy situation, it, it's just for me, I'm happy to be out. So it seems like you have the the mental strength and the uh, even the even the endurance. Now it's just about getting the skills to, to con continue doing new things. Mm -hmm. um, I always find that when I become relatively proficient at something, I, you know, I, I try to keep doing that as a hobbyist, but then I often find myself moving on to something else and just trying to learn that, get proficient at that, add that to my skill set. And, you know, you keep doing that enough, it unlocks enough to, you know, let you conquer the mountain in, in every single way that you want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, this is good. I, I, you've told a lot of stories. Is there any other, I guess, tales or adventures you wanna you wanna share with the audience before we wrap this up? Yeah, so I'd say the one other thing I'd like to talk about too is uh, just if you start at the beginning of my channel and then go to where I am now, I, I think I have maybe thirty or forty videos. Um, but it, it, that's another point of progression. Is like. I started off by using just the GoPro quick app and dumping a bunch of video clips into it and just having it spit out what and whatever it came out. And I just posted that and I thought, wow, this video is amazing. It's so cool. And then I look back at, at it now and I'm like, oh, that's so cringy. That's that that's rough. Because <laughs> either it's like way too big of transitions or way too big of music or anything. But all you really need to get started is like you could shoot your whole adventure on a phone. Like if, if you want to record and start doing stuff, like you said, you just got to try and be bad at it to start and then continue now. Cause I, I, I'm around my videos get around, I'd say like 500 views per video is pretty common. And just those one couple comments of just people saying, Hey, I really like the quality now. Like your transitions are good. And like, it, it, it means a lot. Um, because you put a lot of effort into stuff like this and it's just, it's just fun. At least I find it fun and sharing adventures and sharing what you, what I like to do with just, I all started it for my friends and family, but sometimes a lot of people, other people like this type of stuff. So it, it makes me really feel blessed that like people like what I'm putting out there. And yeah, it's, I get, obviously there's people doing much harder stuff than I am doing or, or much bigger, much cooler per se, I guess. But I'm, 
I just do it for myself and I, I'm just trying to be better than myself each time. So if I can add one little element to the video that makes it better, uh, it's, it's kind of means a lot to me and I, I find it lucky and I'm, I'm very lucky to have a supportive fiance who, uh, will put up with what she calls me as director Dan uh, <laughs> when we're out on trips. Um, so like we just got back from Colorado. I, I, I videotaped our whole run around the Maroon Bells. So that'll be a video coming out um, in the next week or two, whenever I get time to edit it. Um, so yeah, it's just having a supportive person there to do it and just having it be something fun. Cause if it's not fun for you, then, it, it you shouldn't really be doing it in my opinion so it, it's find whatever it is that you like to do um i like to do a lot of different mountain things or outdoor things but even if it's like crocheting or something just try to do it the best you do and you can and just keep progressing and just have a good time doing it because it's, it's all about you at the end of the day Dan, this is great. Thanks. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, can you kind of give any shout outs that you have and tell people where they can find you? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was great talking. Like obviously type two fun is exactly what we like to do. So it's fun talking to more people about this and kind of sharing what we'd like to do. Um, you can, you can find my YouTube channel. It's called the occasional adventurer. Um, it's just on YouTube. I don't have an Instagram for it. Um, my personal Instagram is Daniel Donovan. So if you want to follow me there, uh, I don't post too much there besides just my normal, you normal stuff. So uh, that's that. Um, but yeah, that's, those are pretty much the two places that I post everything. So if you want to follow along to our adventures, um, I, we are continuing, like I said, continuing to progress. So, uh, we're trying to do more and more harder stuff uh, as the future goes on. And yeah, hopefully one day uh, I'll be out in the mountains sometime. Um, and I hope to see you there because I've ran into a lot of fun people and I would love to meet whoever likes to do what we like to do as well out there. So, Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dan. I had a blast. I liked, I liked your perspective on this. It's something I, I mimic myself. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. No problem. And thanks for making a great podcast to share stuff like this. So it's been great. Thank you for listening to the Type 2 Fun Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a follow and feel free to reach out to say hello, give feedback, or share your Type 2 Fun story.